Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconin, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Kenny Glick on the line. He is the owner and creator of HitTheBid.com. You've been out there hitting some bids, Kenny. This market's looking pretty ugly today. Uh, yes. Thanks for having me on, by the way. How are you guys doing? We're doing good, doing good. Before we go into the market and stuff, uh, you did a, a little segment with uh, our trusty uh, Garrett Cook in Sanglucci. Uh, why don't you tell us what you guys uh, what you guys did and how people can find it? Oh yeah, I've been doing a little bit with uh, SLTV, my uh, friends over at the Sanglucci Group. Uh, a lot of fun, you know. I just like I like making videos, getting my you know point of view. I guess everybody likes getting their point of view or their opinions on Wall Street to be heard. Uh, we had a you know conversation about not letting ego get in your way and uh, just you know letting the market tell you what to do. And you know it's been a really great way that I've started this year, and I I've, I've, I've pledged to myself to go back and again I've been doing this. I'm like a dinosaur in the in the, in the uh, industry. By the way, I just want to say. Andy Swan, love the Andy Swan. Um, good, good to good to hear him on the uh, on the radio. But yeah, I've just been keeping it real simple, and uh, you know things have been working out pretty well. Okay, Kenny, you made a very interesting comment uh, just before we brought you on the show, and uh, and I was gonna go at you because I remember it, when was he on last time, Brianna? Do you remember? It was a couple months ago since we had Kenny on, and uh, the market was in the bullish mode, and um, you were in a bullish mode, and the market did continue higher. Uh, we've run into a little bit of problems as of late. So, have you have you got rid of that bull hat and put a bear hat on? Well, it's been a while. Uh, I've been a bull since you know. Obviously, I talk a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and uh, <laughs> gut feelings. But after that crash, you know the 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 oh eight oh nine and uh you know my true belief was that the market came to the rescue of uh i'm sorry that the government came to the rescue of the market and i really bought into it uh around june of 2012 and i was a bull all the way right until you know waiting for that santa claus rally you know the october sell-off it it came and went in in a matter of minutes which king it kind of shook the foundations of what i was believing but lately I was seeing the same signs in the market as I was in October, and I completely switched gears. And again, like I was alluding to earlier, I'm not going to be stubborn or proud or let ego or what I've said in the past change what I do yesterday or in the future. Because what I saw yesterday in the market when this thing was gapped up huge and continued to run and, you know, I talk a lot about VWAP, and I talk about sentiment, and I talk about reversals. I saw that right across the board. And if you could believe this, I was shorting this market right at the high of the day yesterday, along with the Alcoa, along with the KB Homes. And I remain a bear now. And for someone like me, who has been rah-rah this market for quite a while now, to switch gears, and I've been telling my followers on Twitter and stock Twitch and anybody who would want to listen, maybe you should listen. Maybe you should, maybe if you don't want to go short this market, but maybe pull back. Stop trying to figure out when oil is going to stop going down. Stop trying to figure out when gold and silver is going to go down. Keep an eye on the VIX and look what this market's telling you. You don't see a 250 point, 300 point move in the Dow reversed in a healthy market. It seems like you're pretty, you know, the, you, you really uh, think out your positions and your, your stances on the market. And once you get set one way, it's kind of hard to convince you to go the other way. What what could the market do to change your mind and and make you reevaluate your thesis? Is there something technical? Is it sentiment? Is it combination of different factors? Or boy, do you just think this is uh, this is going to be a hard one to change your mind on? Well, I'll tell you something. It, it, it that's kind of a loaded question. It depends on what your time frame is. You know, You're even right. though we saw Alcoa report a great quarter, but yet the stock reversed yesterday, which is my number one indicator to sell. If you have all positive headlines and the stock, you know, first of all, you know, I talk a lot about volume weighted average price. It is my holy grail. Once we break under VWAP and the stock's reversing, that changes sentiment. So until I see the opposite on the downside. 
you know, for instance, like a day like this. I mean, my, my, my sentiment can change like that because that's what this market has been like lately. So if I see this market starting to stabilize and a gap down like today reverses and then breaks above some key levels that I'm looking for, I might be bullish. But this is the kind of market where if you can tell me where we're going to be a month from now, no you're, you're, yeah, it's, it, it's virtually impossible. So what I've been doing yesterday, in a day like yesterday, for someone like me and someone who you know talks to day traders, I guess, I don't know, are we calling them day traders anymore? Let's call them traders, <laughs> swing traders, whatever you like. Yesterday's the kind of day that could really make your month, make sometimes make your year, depending on what you're looking at. Because yesterday was a monumental sentiment shift. That really sent some fear. Gap reversals and the, the question when people are asking themselves, why did that happen? I don't ask myself why anymore. And that really has taken something, you know, it's made my trading life easier. I don't care why the market's doing anything. And, you know, what we're doing here, and everybody's got an opinion, and everybody's got a website talking about systems and how they're going to gauge the market and what they think's going to happen two weeks ago, uh, you know, what's going to happen three months from now. It's amazing how many pe people have opinions, and I cannot tell you how much volume with an average price. And, again, I'm like the, I'm like the uh, uh, I should be the poster child to this indicator because this just clarifies and cuts through all the minutia of what everybody's saying, CNBC, Fox News, any website, any talking head guru, it is the one indicator that has significantly changed my career, changed my life, and showed me the light yesterday. All I'm doing is pressing buttons. I am not a genius. But when this market reversed yesterday, I'm proud to say that I was, I was selling at the top there, and, you know, obviously I'm just loving it right now with this gap down. And you know what? I'm covering my shorts right now. Where are we going to go? You know, when you see a gap down this big, you take something off the table in the morning, pat yourself on the back for being brave enough to hold the shorts overnight. Yep. And now I'm back, now I'm back flat looking to rock and roll, you know? So I'm, whatever happens next, I'm going to do whatever the market tells me. So more importantly, what do you think is going to happen? The uh, Kenny Glick, owner and creator of HitTheBid.com, joining us on Benzinga's pre-market prep, brought to you by MarketFi. Uh, Kenny, uh, you know, great, uh, great analysis there, and I like the way you have your indicator, your VWAP, and that's what you stick with, and you'll see where it develops, and you make your trades based on that, right? And you can right. live with the results, right? If it if it turns out, you know, there was a reversal or something that didn't work out, at least you based it on a consistent indicator and it's something that you can live with. Uh, one thing I just wanted to talk to you about, too, and I, I uh, just look at over my notes from the past show and uh, remember talking to you about X. And, I, you know, as much as, you know, I remember you had a, a bullish stake on it or a bullish slant on it. And obviously you have changed or reversed your position. But what we like to talk a lot about at the show is like managing trades and managing losing trades. It, you know, it's really very important. Um, this one, boy, it had, it popped over $46. And I know you were trading it. What? Uh, can you remember how you ended up playing that one, and if you were able, if you were able to get it on the short side at all? Funny you brought that up because I was going to talk about how that stock represents all that I just spoke of. How, because when that stock was in the in you know at twenty five when we started buying it, and then it was breaking thirty five, we were loving it. Then at forty two, we're still loving it, thinking the stock's easily closing at fifty by the end of the year. But then. What happened? They reported earnings, and the stock failed on what was a pretty decent report. So right there, we said, you know what? Maybe this thing's not going to 50. Let's not get what we told people where we thought the stock would go. Let's admit we're wrong, because what's more important? Being proud of being right or admitting you're wrong and not losing money. So again, we took a winning position. And it kind of turned into a loser because, hey, we were buying it all the way up thinking that we were going to sell the whole thing at 50. But once the stock broke under 40, we started selling it. And I remember the day somebody asked me, 
wait a second, how come you're selling US Steel? Didn't you just buy more? I was like, yeah, but it's not looking as good as it was when we were buying it. And at the break's 38, I'm really nervous that this thing might be going back to 30. And then I'll tell you, at 30, I, I couldn't believe I was selling the rest of it. And I felt like I was panicking. But again, going back to the notion of saying, let the market tell me what to do. I'm not going to be proud and say, wait a minute, this is U.S. Steel. I thought the stock was going to be 50 bucks. I can't sell it here at 30. Where is it now? 21.92, still falling. We actually did short it a couple of times on the way back down. But this stock represents everything that I try to teach people. This stock represents all that I do. Do not ever, if you're in a trade, and guys, if you're paying attention still, don't ever say, let's see what happens. Nope. Because people who invested in steel, when it broke 30 and they were in the stock at 35, they probably said, ah, it's U.S. steel, let's see what happens. And then the loss becomes bigger, and then your pride takes over. You don't want to take that loss now. Well, I could have lost five points. Now I'm down 10. I'm not going to take this loss. And now what happens? You're down 20 points. So, again, this all comes back to an earnings report, a failed a failed stock, a reversal, and a breakdown of what I call the multi-day view app is one of my special sauces that I have little altered, you know, that my uh, me and my buddy have come up with. And it's uh, it's been a godsend. And you know what? The crazy thing is, even U.S. Steel, a stock that I thought would be 50 bucks 15 days ago, sitting at 21.90, I still don't like it. So, you know, I again, I will never allow my emotions to get in the way. And if you watch any of my videos, <laughs> right, I'm an emotional I, guy from from I, time to time. You know, I, I, but when it comes to the money, I I, I let the I let the VWAP or the VWAP as you call it, a little different twang on the uh, the WAP or the WAP. <laughs> I just let it tell me what to do, and uh, you know it's it's been fantastic. Do you watch so right it now on the market? Do, yeah, do you yeah, watch yeah, it on? Do you watch it on each individual stock? Are you walking on watching it on the spiders? Are you watching it on the spoos? What do you, what are you watching on it? Uh, you know, primarily. I watch I watch the individual stocks, and if I'm going to trade the market, I'm more of a, a I'm I'm a throwback. You know, I still only watch uh, the QQQ and the NQ futures. I'm a tech guy. I'll I'll glance over at the uh, the ES and the and the spies every once in a while. I certainly don't care about the 30 stocks in the Dow. Really, <laughs> doesn't really serve any point for me anymore. But um, it has been here. Yeah, just look at this U.S. deal. Just the market opened up, and nobody cares about it. And there was a thesis that you know cheap oil was going to hurt U.S. deal. And you know every once in a while, those guys on Seeking Alpha, those you know 18 year old kids living in their mom's basement, write these great papers, and <laughs> that kid nailed it. <laughs> uh, real quickly, can you pull up the VWAP and the S and P's right now in uh, in the front March, the March futures? Can you bring that up for me, real quick? Yep. And uh, while you're doing it, I mean, it, it's something. It's a term that we don't talk a lot about on the show. Dennis and I have, you know, we're pretty much, uh, you know, your candlestick, your open, your high, low, close, double bottom, triple bottom kind of kind of traders. Uh, multiple closes at the same level. If just real quickly, I know you're not trading this instrument but just you know give us a look at the VWAP and if you were trading it you know just a possible scenario I, I imagine that it's probably a little bit higher right I would just take a guess value weighted average price we've had a big range maybe like around 2006 2007 how's that for throwing a dart at the wall well right now I'm just let me just point out something while we've been on the air I covered my QQQ short near the lows of the day because like I said when you got a gap down, where is the market really going to go? This is what we call the fade up. These are the people like me who came in short and said, ah, here's the gap down. Here's that fear that people would sell overnight. The JP Morgan number came out bad. So let's just take the money off the table. And right now, if you can believe it, the ES futures have just gone from the lower deviation band, which was around 1991 right up to the one-minute VWAP, which is sitting there at 2,000 and spot 50. So right now, this is an important level for your, for your one minute on the ES futures, and we just failed at that level. So now if we break through it, you can look for a nice eight-point pop on the upside to about 2,008. 
And that's what I that's what I look for. But there's there's a lot of different ways to play the V Web. It's not just hey, it's breaking through it. Let's okay. buy it. And uh, you just like threw a, you just threw a market order there, right? You in the queues, you didn't you didn't get picky on price. You just said I want in on that opening print, so you just threw out a market order, right? And uh, one double o fifty was the open, dipped to one double o thirty five, and uh, back over one o one, right? You don't get you just you just wanted that that, that opening print, right? You didn't get picky all like oh I need uh, one double o thirty nine or something like that. You want you just threw it in for the opening print, correct? I actually put the, I was piecing out of it the whole morning, but I'm a big half number, whole number trader. Oh, there you go. Because I'm, again, I'm a big throwback guy, you know, when we used to trade in, in fractions. Oh, Remember yeah. that? Oh, that was exciting oh. times. Don't bring me back to those days. Do not bring me back <laughs> to those days. All right, we've been on the line here uh, with uh, Kenny Glick, and he is owner and creator of HitTheBid.com. Uh, tries to add a little bit of comic relief to the market. We appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, we will like to have you on again. Yeah, man. Uh, next time, definitely we'll see where U.S. Steel is, and uh, we'll see where this market goes up today. Always, a, always fun hanging out and you know talking some shop with you guys. Also, but one thing on that, on that, uh, my little, my little blurb about me, selling slime. This sounds so awful. Maybe you wanna, you wanna change that a little bit. It sounds so bad, like I'm an evil dude. Um, Brianna, you wanna comment on that? Kenny, that's the bio you gave us. <laughs> I, know, I think I had somebody write that for me. I was like, I don't remember <laughs> saying selling slime. I'm like, you said over I, I guess. But I, we'll, I guess we'll people sure should know that I, I, I fled I fled from that industry pretty quickly when I realized what was going on. I just want you to know, but I looked over at Brianna. She had like the double pistols out on that one. She was ready. She was ready for that answer. So <laughs> you got a tough crowd here, Kenny. You better you know you better watch out here. But uh, thanks a lot for coming on. Enjoy your analysis of the market. And like I said, have a great trading day. And we'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. Thanks again. Good luck, guys.